As you know, we do not typically air Donald Trump's speeches live, and on this show, we are judicious about even playing clips from his rallies, and always either with or for the proper context for a discussion. That's because Donald Trump lies so frequently, and we all learned on January 6th that those lies can fuel very real violence. We've also learned that the sting from the poison of Trump's lies gets duller the more frequently you're exposed to it. But as journalists, we also have a duty to bear witness when our nation is in peril, to shine a light on the dark path that Donald Trump and his allies and enablers lead us down. And that is the moment at which we find ourselves this morning. I'll admit to being a little surprised late last night that anything Donald Trump can say can surprise me anymore. But this is some nasty stuff. Last night's speech was dangerous for the truths that Donald Trump told, as it was for the lies. And there were lies, to be sure, but the truth is that we are dangerously close to Donald Trump rising to power again and finishing what he started when he tried to overturn the results of the last presidential election and take over the government in contravention of the will of the American people. And if you listen closely to his 99-minute speech from last night, he was basically openly plotting how he's going to weaponize the government by cleaning house and firing anyone that his administration considers an enemy or insufficiently loyal to Trump's self-serving agenda. But never forget our enemies want to stop us because we are the only ones, and that's all of you and me, all working together, who can stop them. We're the only ones that can stop them. They want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. It's very simple. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. And in the end, they're not after me, they're after you, and I just happen to be standing in their way. That's true. We are a failing nation. We are a nation in decline. And now these radical left lunatics want to interfere with our elections by using law enforcement. It's totally corrupt, and we won't let it happen. 2024 is our final battle. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers from our government. We will drive out the globalists. We will cast out the communists, Marxists, fascists. We will throw off the sick political class that hates our country. And we will rout the fake news media. We will defeat crooked Joe Biden. And we will drain the swamp once and for all. Joining me now, Stuart Stevens, senior advisor for the Lincoln Project and author of the forthcoming book, The Conspiracy to End America, Five Ways My Old Party is Driving Our Democracy to Autocracy. Also with us is the GOP, former GOP strategist and the co-founder of the Lincoln Project, Rick Wilson. He's also the host of the Enemies List podcast. The Enemies List sounds like it's going to get a whole lot uh, longer after that speech last night. And the author of the book, Running Against the Devil, A Plot to Save America from Trump and Democrats from Themselves. Uh, good morning to both of you, Rick. I saw you uh, shaking your head. And that says something, because you two, unlike a lot of people in my audience, you two do have to listen to this stuff because of the work that you've done in parsing it and making people hear it. So I am also surprised that you'd be shaking your head because this got really dark. I didn't think Trump could get darker and could start talking more like an autocrat or a dictator. But it, it, he seems to study the criticism of him and then double down. You know, uh, 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 this is a, a classic piece of, you know, chasing the authoritarian dragon. He knows the audience wants more and more and more. He understands that the Republican Party, as it exists today, has increasingly not only become tolerant of authoritarianism, but they desire it. There's a reason why Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis are the two most popular Republican candidates by an order of magnitude, practically, at this point. It's because both of them are telling the audience, I will be the strong man, I will be the dictator, I will be the one who punishes your enemies, I'm here to bring you through the apocalyptic battle so that we can crush our, our opponents before us and, and eliminate their ability to ever put an idea or a contest or a political candidate against you at one, in your life. It's a really dark path.
Stuart, I, I have to ask, though, I, I can understand that Trump's running so far ahead of DeSantis and everybody else in that race that he's, he's using what works for the primary. But I cannot see why independent voters, why moderate Republicans would go for this sort of talk. It, it's, it's, it's really dangerous stuff. I mean, this lumping of communists and Marxists and fascists and 2024 is our final battle. If you believe in democracy, then 2024 is definitely not your final battle battle. Yeah, um, look, I, I think we're going to have a close election. We've learned, I mean, the Democrats with the Electoral College, they have to win by at least four points. So it's really important to keep in mind for everybody over this next year, when you see a poll and Biden is ahead by two points, he's probably losing the Electoral College. So it's really a game of small numbers. 40,000 people, if they had changed uh, their vote in the last election, even though Biden won by over 7 million, well, it only took 40,000, Trump would still be president and think what that would mean. Um, you know, what's happening here is he, he just, if you read studies of authoritarianism, they always say, listen to what they say because they say what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. And as Rick said, that's exactly what is happening here. And he's not running for the Constitution. He's not running for rule of law. He has become what you're, you're supposed to support. It's a classic strongman thing. And that the world is in such chaos. America is this terrible place. Only I can save you, which is what he said when he uh, ran for president in, in his uh, inaugural address. And it is extraordinarily dangerous. And these people can win. And we must wrap our heads around that. So again, I ask you guys, Rick, what, what does one do about it? Because what you did through the last election cycle and the cycle before that was to uh, underscore some of these things, to, to sort of take the best of, the, the, the hit parade of what Donald Trump does. And, and sometimes to make the point, you'd put sort of dark music and, and, and uh, special effects into some of those ads. You, I mean, there's nothing your dark music and special effects can do now. He's saying all those things that you were warning people he actually meant. So when Stuart says, listen to what he actually says. If you listen to what he actually says, I mean, he had, he had everything last night. He talked about families. He talked about leftist universities and Marxist assaults on American heritage and Western civilization itself, which tends to have sort of shades of uh, nationalism. He spoke about social media and, and uh, uh, trans bills and anti-vax conspiracy. I mean, what do you what do you now do? Who's left to convince and what do we have to do to convince them that this is danger? Well, the good news is he's actually <clears throat> expanded the number of what we call soft Republicans who are addressable, who Joe Biden could persuade. That number has gotten larger, while the core of the Republican Party has gotten much crazier, much more intense. So he can still win with just that crazy core, but there are more Republicans and, and conservative independents who can be moved away from Trump now than there were in 2020. That's the good news. The bad news is that Democrats need to rally around Joe Biden right now. You need to have zero daylight between any Democratic official, elected person, donor. They need to be 100 percent behind Joe Biden. Stop complaining. Stop pretending you're going to get somebody different or better or more fun or younger. Joe Biden's going to be your nominee. Get behind him now because the battle is already on. Donald Trump is going to win this nomination. And we need to be ready for that. It, it, look, it is a long fight ahead. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for anybody. People who don't think this election is going to be uh, a, a, a bloodbath are mistaken. Stuart? Yeah, this is also why the danger of a third party that no labels is uh, supporting is so incredibly dangerous. Because there are this group of people out there that if they voted, for, a lot of them voted for Trump in 16, Biden uh, helped the Lincoln Project and others helped, came back to him in 20. But if you give them an off-ramp to vote for any other alternative, they will, a certain percentage, and it can be deciding a sentence, will vote for that person. And that is, that will elect Donald Trump. So, you know, it, this has to be taken with great seriousness. Uh, it's what we wake up every day in the Lincoln Project and do. And, you know, one of the challenges here is the, the language to talk about this, because it sounds so alarmist. But it's like a pandemic. Whatever you say at the beginning will sound alarmist, but at the end, it's going to prove inadequate. Yep. And that is this moment. I actually... 